I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. Save me. Oh, one day when I was lost, he died, he died upon, upon the cross. And I know it was the blood. Save me. Oh, I know it was the blood. strength 
from day to day it will never lose its power it reaches to the high yes mountain and it flows through the low west valley oh yeah, yeah oh the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never the lose his power it reaches to the high yes mountain is there a witness in the building and it flows through the low Oh, the blood, oh, the blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. Hallelujah. Can somebody thank God for the blood? Can somebody thank God for the blood? Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood. Oh, 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 oh the blood. Yeah. Reaches to the lowest valley. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father God, how can we say thank you for all that you've given unto us? Things so undeserved, but you died to prove your love. The voices of a million angels cannot express our gratitude but all that I am and ever hope to be I owe it all my God to thee to God to God to God be the glory to God be the glory to God be the glory for the thing that he has done. We thank you today as we stand here in your presence one more time. And God, we just want to take a moment to thank you for Calvary. We want to take a moment, oh God, to thank you for the work of the cross. For God, even as I've heard time and time again, you didn't have to do it, but you did. For while we were yet sinners, you commended your love toward us in that you died on the cross. You paid the ultimate price that we might live. So God, this morning we stand here 
weak but strong. Yeah. Weak but strong because of your grace. Guilty but justified because of your grace. Filthy but righteous because of your grace. And God, because you did that, we stand this morning in confidence, believing that there is yet a blessing in the house for those who trust in you. There is yet healing in the house for those who believe in you. There is life in the house for those who have hope, because hope maketh not a shame. Now, oh God, would you have your way in this place? Feel the longing soul as only you are able to do. We believe the report of the Lord this morning. We believe, oh God, that we won't leave the same way we came in. We believe, oh God, this morning that when praises go up, blessings come down. We believe this morning, oh God, that you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. And God, this morning, I got a praise. <laughs> I gotta pray. I gotta pray. I gotta pray. I gotta pray. And I gotta get it out. I gotta pray. And I gotta get it out this morning. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Have your way in this place. Thank you for your anointing that's already here. Thank you for your power that's already moving. Thank you for lives being changed, yokes being destroyed, fetters being broken in the matchless name of Jesus. God, you do these things. We'll be ever so careful to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. And the people of God said, amen. Somebody give God a praise in this house. Hallelujah. Come on, bless his name in this place. Hallelujah. If you got a praise, give him glory this morning. Yes. If you're so thankful about what God has done, if you're so thankful for the fact that he died on the cross when we weren't fit to live or die, he made it right. Somebody give God a praise in this place. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Oh, glory to God. Please open up your Bible to the book of Acts, chapter 10. Verse 38, Acts 10, 38. Peter is giving a nice summary of the gospel. Acts 10, starting in verse 38. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that he is which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. As Pastor Crowell said, this is Super Bowl Sunday for a saint. So if you came to praise, you already ready? We gonna pump you up, we gonna bathe you. Praise was already on your mind when you came in. I can't hear nobody already. If praise was your agenda, you ready already. If it's on the agenda, you ready already. We say 
say good morning, social media. Let's go. He 
got up. He got up. Death could not hold him. My Savior, he got up. He got, he got up. Hey, he got up. Death could not hold him. My Savior, he got up.
and I declare that by faith. Whether you've seen it or yet or not, we want to declare that today. He did exceedingly, abundantly, above all that. I have to say, he did exceedingly, abundantly, above all that. I have to say, he did exceedingly, abundantly, above all that.
Savior. Amen. To magnify his name. And I know some places this morning said they're not going to mention Calvary or the blood or the resurrection. Amen. But without that, without that, we'll be lost. Amen. So we honor the spirit of the Lord in this house today and give him all the praise and honor that he is worthy to receive. And we welcome each every one of you to the worship services of Living Word Temple of Restoration. Our order of service is as follows. Sunday worship service at 10 a.m. Bible studies on Tuesday evenings at 6.15 p.m. And intercessory prayer is on Saturdays at 9 a.m. It is offering time. It's offering time. Amen. We can't beat God giving. This is an opportunity for us to participate in the ministry of giving. Amen. For we have been so blessed of the Lord in so many ways. So we ask everyone to prepare your hearts and your minds to give. Amen. First, with your tithes and the offering as the Lord leads. And this morning, we want to center ourselves on Malachi 3, 11 and 12, which tells us, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall the vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, says the Lord of hosts. Amen? That is a promise to us. If you need an envelope, please raise your hands, and the ushers will make sure to get one to you. There are so many convenient ways for you to give today. First of all, if you're writing a check, make it out to Living Word Temple of Restoration. And if you need to mail it, you can mail it to 219 Stenson Street, Rochester, New York, 14606. You can also give online. You can go on our website, lwtr.org. You can jump on Cash App, Dollar Sign, Living Word, Tormy, or PayPal at LWTRROC. And if you need to use your debit or credit card this morning, that is also available to you. Raise your hand. 
and we'll make sure to come to you. Amen. Are we all ready? We're going to ask everyone to please stand. And we're asking everyone who's physically able to, whether you've given electronically, whether you have nothing to give this morning, to please come around so that we're not stepping all over each other. Touch the basket. Amen. You are now under the direction of the ushers. From the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave. From the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven. Have we all participated? And let us bow our head as we thank the Lord. Father, we thank you for being our sustainer. We thank you, God, for giving us resources, Lord. We thank you for the offerings that have been received in this house. We ask you to multiply it, Lord, a hundredfold to meet every need of the ministry, Lord. And we thank you for all those that gave. We ask you to bless them this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, ladies, our women's brunch is on Saturday, May 4th at 10 a.m. Uh, if you have not purchased your tickets yet, please see us in the foyer after service. Tickets are $40, and we ask you to purchase a ticket and bring or invite a friend, a family member. Amen, and that is May 4th. There's no junior church today as we celebrate Resurrection Sunday together. Amen. Can we stand to our feet, please? Oh, I forgot one other announcement. I'm so sorry. We do have um, these uh, solar eclipse glasses. Thank you, someone. Uh, the solar eclipse event is happening next Monday. They're free and available uh, for you, uh, for your family or whatever. So please grab some after service so that you can view the solar eclipse safely. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you for saying to your feet. We're going to get ready to receive our bishop. Amen? Thank God for the shepherd of this house. God bless you. seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I want to call your attention this morning. I'm competing with the sweetheart. Close them doors for just a second, please. Thank you. Uh, I want to call our attention to the gospel of St. Luke, chapter 23, verses 32 through 49. Luke 23, amen, Luke 23, verses 32 through 49. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. Oh, God has smiled on me. God has smiled on me, he has set me free, oh, God has smiled on me, he's been good to me, amazing 
I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. I tell you that God has smiled on me. He has set me free. Sweet the sound saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. I tell you that God has smiled on me. There were also two other male factors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. And the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood beholding. And the rulers also with them derided him saying, He saved others. Let him save himself. If he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar. And saying, if thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And the superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And one of the male factors which were hanged railed on him, saying, if thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Does not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily, I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the mist. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit and having said thus he gave up the ghost now when the centurion saw what was done he glorified God saying certainly this was a righteous man and all the people that came together to that site beholding the things which were done smote their breast and returned and all his acquaintance and the women that followed him from Galilee stood afar off beholding these things if we could use a simple thought this morning it would be take your place take your place our God and Father we come now to the preaching moment on this resurrection Sunday 
And Father, we ask for an anointing to get back up. We ask for anointing to stand up again. We ask for anointing that will prop us up on every leaning side and build us up where we've been torn down and strengthen us where we're weak. Father, we stretch our hand to thee. No other help we know this morning. Somebody need a quickening. Somebody need a shaking in the valley. Somebody need a still small voice. God, in the name of Jesus, touch us in this place where two or three are gathered together in your name, touching and agreeing you promised to be in the midst. Send your word now. Send the word of life. Send the word of peace. Send the word of salvation. A word of comfort and hope. For your word will not go out and return unto you empty, but accomplish that which you please and prosper in the thing where unto you sent it. Now let Christ be glorified and these thy people edified in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, Amen, amen. Take your place, take your place, take your place. I want to submit to you today that the cross is a symbol of transformation and reversals. The cross is a symbol of transformation and reversals. It is at the cross that darkness will give way to light. Sin must give way to salvation and death will give way to eternal life. On Resurrection Sunday, one of the most important days on the Christian calendar, we remember the power of Christ to stand up again. To take your life back. In that Christ had the power to rise from the dead, we have the power not to live in fear of death, and more importantly, that freedom is supposed to impact the way you live and I live right now. When we live a life of faith in Christ, he gives us the grace to take our rightful place. Now, I need some help because I'm not going to be long because there's some kind of good food waiting for me, I believe. So if you help me, we can get through this. I wish you would be prophetic to somebody and say, take your place. When you look at the cross, there is a threefold thing that I want you to think about. Jesus is not just some man on the cross. He's a king on the cross he's a prophet on the cross and he's a priest on the cross he's not any king he's the king of the universe Isaiah said it like on this for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Somebody say he's a king. So he's got power to rule. He's got power to rule. He has a, a regency. He has a realm. He has a reign. But he's not just a king on the cross. He's a prophet on the cross. Turner, how do you know? Moses told me in Deuteronomy 18 and 15, the Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee. Of thy brethren like unto me, unto him he ye shall hearken. Whenever you got a prophet, now a king got power and authority over something. But a prophet always comes to teach you something. A prophet is an interpreter or a translator. I've been to the Dominican Republic, but I don't know Spanish. But thank God for Jericho who will translate for me so that I can enter into dialogue. I'm not Colombian, but thank God for the agreements who will. 
They'll get in between you and the other party to help you be able to communicate. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. I know it was the... Y'all missing something. He made a way for a holy God and a sinful William to be able to communicate. You need a prophet who's a teacher. They translate from God for the people of God and brings hidden revelation into present application. Can I say that again? Take God's hidden truth and make it rhema for your life. I've come to tell us today, we need a word of revelation for what we're dealing with right now. And I don't just need a corporate word. Can I preach briefly here? I need God to speak to my heart. Speak to me, Lord. I need a word. But he's not just a king and a prophet. He's a priest. And you like to quote Hebrews 6. I like to quote it like Daniel said and David said in the 110th division of Psalms in the fourth verse. The Lord hath sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. A king has something to rule over. A prophet has something to teach you. But a priest has something to give. A priest always comes with an offering. I want to submit to you that Jesus doesn't go to the cross because he needs the cross. Jesus goes to the cross because we need the cross. Because where there is no shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sin. Jesus goes to the cross. He showed me how to live a holy life. But what I love about the cross, he shows me how to suffer. For if I suffer, I'll gain eternal life and when I see Jesus amen Jesus goes to the cross sister uh, uh, Benlin to bring us back to what we were always intended to be kings and priests God made us to be royal but sin will make you common make you say everything out your mouth Make you hook up with everything come through. Make you lay down with stuff you ought not to lay down with. And make you get up with stuff you didn't wish you wanted to get up with. Sin will make you common. But I hear God saying, I want you to take your place as a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a peculiar people. And what I love about Christianity, I don't care how dirty you may be this morning. The blood can wash you white as snow there's power power wonder working power in the blood though your sins be as scarlet hill make them white as snow and though they be like crimson hill make it like wool I can't get ahead of myself because I only got a brief message but I want to tell you God will do it again you may not know how, and you may not know when, but God will do it again. And if you're here this morning, God is calling you to a higher place in him. I came to tell somebody, you ain't got to look like what you've been through. I come to tell you, God will cover all your mess. God will cut all your mistakes. God will give you a reset like it never even happened. Somebody say, take your place. Take your place. Some of us won't take our place because you got to go through the darkness to get to the light. Some of us don't want to take our place because you got to have heartache to really appreciate healing. Some of us don't want to take our place because we've been down so long. We've adapted ourselves to being down and don't know how to get up. But Jesus came to tell me, tell you this the problem. You can't get up by yourself. You need my grace to help you to get up and to take your place. For without me, you can do nothing. Ephesians 2 and 10 says these words, for we are his workmanship, 
created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God have before ordained that we should walk in them. When I come to Jesus I'm supposed to have power to live different. I've got to have power to talk different. I'm supposed to have power to think different. I'm even supposed to have power to cope differently than I used to before I was in Christ. If God be for you he's greater than the whole world against you and no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper tell the devil it didn't work it didn't work it didn't work tell the devil it didn't work you wanted my joy you wanted my peace you wanted my mind but I'm here devil it didn't work so on the cross somebody say on the cross there's a king there's a priest and there's a prophet but what happens at the cross on the cross the king becomes a servant on the cross the king becomes a servant he wasn't there for himself he was there for me now now you, you ain't got to say amen because actually I'm gonna let you in on another little secret I really didn't come to preach to y'all I came to preach me happy I got a whiff of a breakthrough and I got a whiff of an elevation and when you're getting ready to break out of jail time is of the essence and even though you told folk you about to break out somebody's scared to go you can't wait on a scared person and I can't do like Harriet and put a shotgun on you because this breakout ain't a natural breakout. This is a spiritual, mental, soul, intellectual breakout. And if mama don't want to go, I got to go. If daddy don't want to go, I got to go. If sister and brother don't want to go, I got to go. If the preacher don't want to go, if the mother of the church don't, there's a breakout coming. And I got to take my place. When he move, I got to move with him. If he go right, I got to go right. If he go left, I... But he said today, I'm going up, William. Why does the king because of sermon? Because I couldn't reach up to heaven by myself. And because I couldn't reach up to heaven by myself, the king became a ladder so I can step on his sacrifice. And now I'm seated in him. That was good. But he's so good. And he'll give me double for my trouble. The king doesn't just become a servant, but the priest became a sacrifice. See, a priest don't ever approach God without an offering. And what do you give a perfect holy God? You couldn't get him any old thing. You can't go to Jared's. You can't go to the Federal Reserve. You can't give him a position. But I hear Jesus saying, if you give me a body, I'll go down and redeem men back unto you. They called him the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Now you a good priest if you offer a sacrifice. But there ain't nobody like the great high priest. He looked for something to give God. And when he couldn't find nothing, he said, here I am. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. Abraham couldn't do it. Isaac and Jacob couldn't do it. Elisha couldn't do it. But I see one from the tribe of Judah called Emmanuel. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. And he died. Oh yes, he died. He died from the sixth to the ninth hour. He died till the sun refused to shine. He died till the earth began to quake. He died. Oh, did he die? He died. 
You know how he died? He died till the temple was torn in two. You know what that was saying? Heaven is now open for the business of resuscitation. Heaven is open for revival. Heaven is open for renewal. Come on up. Some folk want you to come in at the back door. Jesus kicked the front door open and said, come on. We've been waiting for you. That's good. King becomes servant. Priest becomes sacrifice. But this one is bad here. The prophet became a prophecy. A prophet is a translator. Lord, help me somebody. He speaks a word. He is not the word. But Jesus got that devil set up. <laughs> he came looking like a prophet. <laughs> but he wasn't just a prophet. He was the prophecy. In the beginning was the word. <laughs> the logos. <laughs> and the logos became rhema. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> the reason why the prophet became a prophecy. Because <laughs> as long as you hearing it. It's external to you. <laughs> But when it becomes a breath, it doesn't just go in your ear, but it gets down in your spirit and it changes your heart so that you don't need nobody to tell you what he said. You've got it in you already. Where we're going and you take your place. It's not a season of being dependent on somebody to hear the word for you. You moving in a season where God is going to send a word to rattle your life and turn your frown upside down. Too long we've been dependent on other folk telling us who we are, but God's going to give you an encounter where you know for yourself. Somebody say, breathe on me. Notice I didn't say, speak to me. Lord, breathe on me. Why you want to breathe on me? Because there's power in the wind. Like he told Ezekiel, prophesy to the wind and tell them to hear the word of the Lord. You ain't got to help me live in word because I'm preaching to me. Come on, north wind, would you blow on the dry bones? Come on, south wind. Come on, east wind. Come on, north wind. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. Hear the word of the Lord. In the text, in the text, Jesus is with two thieves locked in a six hour deliberation that I like to call what you gonna do. What I see on the cross is what I hear God saying up in living word, up in here, up in here. What you going to do? You done told me your life is hard right now. Okay. You done told me you got a bad report from the doctor. Okay. You've got some infirmities. Okay. You got some decisions you need to make. You've got to shift and reprioritize. But I hear the Lord saying, come on, let's deliberate what you going to do. They enter into a six hour, six hour deliberation on sinfulness and righteousness. I need you to understand that none of them ought to be able to talk by now. Come on. Everybody talk about how it was for Jesus to talk. None of them should have been talking. Because usually it was a four to six 
five-day process of dehydrating you, and it was a slow death. But in six hours, they all going to be dead. And when you only got six hours to live, you better get some stuff straight. You caught the point. Some of y'all ain't got time to be fooling around no more. You might only have six hours. They are unlike any other trio in history contemplating the true meaning of life, death, crime, and punishment, and the kingdom of the world to come versus the kingdom of earth. Both thieves are criminals. Jesus is a candidate for the innocent project. He had done nothing. But even though they were criminals, low down, dirty, they had access, unhindered access to Jesus for six hours. Would to God I could get a six hour meeting with Jesus with un unhindered access. And they wasted the first three hours talking about him. Blaspheming him. If you was really a Messiah, save me. Save us. Jesus kept on praying. Come on, come on. When you're trying to get some get back, you ain't delivered. When you're trying to make them understand, you ain't delivered. When you're trying to complain and tell folk, I don't deserve being up here. While they were talking about Jesus, Jesus broke out with one of these. Lord, please. Forgive them. When folk whooping you, lying on you, who go into a prayer of intercession asking God, bless my enemy, somebody who working on a whole nother level. Can I talk to you, missionary? You know why Jesus wasn't mad? It was in the plan. I can't get to the breakthrough without breakdown. I can't get to deliverance without a demolition. I can't get to salvation without suffering. But if I suffer, they're in a deliberation. Somewhere in the first three hours, one of the thieves has a revelation. God don't care how long it takes you. Just get a revelation before it's too late. This is what you call a deathbed confession. You ain't got to be good enough to get saved. Just believe. <laughs> You ain't got to have a perfect life. Just believe. Don't get caught up on your baggage. Just believe. And it's better late than never. But the thing that blows my mind, I don't want to get ahead of myself. This thief got it, but the religious leaders didn't, and neither did the disciples. He makes a choice to connect to Jesus rather than keep on fighting his plan for his life. Living word, God says, please stop fighting me and get on board with the plan I have for your life. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future, to give you a hope, and to bring you to, and it's time to stop crying and get over it. It's time to 
shoulda, woulda, coulda, and get over it. And can I give you one more? It's stop, time to stop playing with holiness and righteous and just be it. So my point today is reclaim your place as a king and a priest. And I want to just look at the conversation and then we'll be out of here. I just want to look at the conversation. <laughs> you hear the thief. He says to the other thief, don't you have any fear? <laughs> Don't you fear God seeing we're in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing amiss. And he said, Lord, remember me. Lord, have mercy. In the final moments of his life, he recognizes his need for Jesus. Living Word, on March 31st, 2024, the devil is trying to make us believe that we can do this without Jesus. But I've come on this Resurrection Sunday to tell you, don't drink the Kool-Aid. Lord, remember me. I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. Lord, I need you to walk with me. I need you to hold my hand. I need you to guide my feet. I need you to be my friend. I need you to be my strong tower. I need you to be my leaning post. I need you to be my battle axe in the battle. And I need you to be a shelter in the time of my storm. Remember me. It's interesting, church. Jesus walked with Peter, James, and John and the boys for three and a half years. But they despaired of faith and they thought it was over. The high priests, the Pharisees, lawyers, teachers have been studying scripture for 4,000 years, preparing for the Messiah. And when he went to the cross, they thought it was but one thief, almost ready to die, he cried out in his mind, it ain't over till God says it's over. Listen what he said to Jesus. He said, Lord, he stopped saying, get me down now. When you get revelation, you'll stop parroting what folks say. And you'll tap into the revelation of God. He was first saying, save us. Save me now. Heal me now. Take me now. Do it now. But something happened. He said, Lord, remember me. When you come. That joker taught you something. You trying to get the Lord to bless you. On the wrong side of Jordan. Somebody say Lord don't you bless me. Till I get to the other side. When I get in the promise. That's why I want you to elevate me. That's why I want you to bless me. That's why I want to hear your word. Lord we're going to the other side. Remember me when you come. Into your kingdom. He spent these six hours. And he finally realized that Jesus was going somewhere. That death couldn't stop Jesus. And basically he was saying, Rev, when you get to where you're going, don't forget about me. Help me somebody. I want you to point out that the thief makes his request in the first three hours because the first three hours on the cross, there's a light. The second three hours, there's going to be darkness. Everybody preached this text as if the thief didn't have to go through nothing. After he said, Lord, remember me, there was darkness before delivering. Don't nobody want to embrace the darkness. 
But if you really in Christ, you ain't afraid of the dark because Jesus is a nightlight. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I'll fear no evil. For thou, come here, let me, thy rod and thy staff comfort me. This is my big brother. This is my big brother. See what he did when he walked up? He put his hand on me. Can I tell you something? I may not can see him, but I feel his hand on me. I may not hear him, but I feel his hand on me. There's darkness around me, but as long as his hand is on me, I will not fear, for thou art. Lord, I can't hear nothing. Ain't nobody with me. He said, do you feel my hand? I'll never leave you. And I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you to the end of the world. Jesus responds. Lord, remember me. Jesus responds this day. This day. In order to take your place, we've got to make a choice and there's got to be a death to what we thought to embrace what God wants. So many people have a double mind in the church because we think we know better than God what we want and what we need. Uh, amen ought to go right there. You think what you know what woman you need. You think what man you need. You think you know what job you need. And what we really need is the will of God for our life. Sometimes what you need and I need is suffering. Because you can't appreciate deliverance if you ain't been through nothing. You can't appreciate healing if you ain't never been sick. You can't appreciate air unless you ever been asthmatic. Anybody asthmatic? Ever your breath ever been taken away from you? What was the only thing you thought about when you couldn't breathe? Getting another breath. Can y'all help me preach? Say, beloved, I know you're dealing with some things. I know you're going through some things. But do me a favor. Put it in perspective, let me walk over here and say, beloved, beloved, I know you got some trials. I know you got some tests and some tribulations, but put it in perspective. I've had some good days. I've had some heels to climb. <laughs> I've had uh, some weary days, and I've had, uh, I wish I had me a church, uh, some sleepless nights, uh, but when I look around, uh, and I begin to think things over, uh, all my good days, uh, they've outweighed my bad days, uh, and Lord, I won't complain, uh, Lord, you've been good to me, uh, you've been good to me, uh, better than this whole world could ever be so I'll just say thank you Lord I won't complain sometimes the clouds hang low and I can hardly I can hardly see the road I ask the question Lord why so much pain but Lord You've been good to me. You've been good to me. Even though my weary eyes, they cannot see. And I just won't. We live in a historical moment. Where rampant deception is taking place. The demonic propaganda of our day is selling a lie to tell you you can have it both ways. 
you can have it all. But the Bible teaches something differently. James 4 and 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship with the world is enmity with God. I want to tell you what the Bible said. First Peter 2 and 9. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness. Let me hear it. He's called you out of darkness into the marvelous light which in time past were not a people but are now the people of God which had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy. This day you will be with me. Christ does not need anything from the thief. But Christ has everything the thief needs. And as soon as he answers Christ's offer, Christ offers him a position in his kingdom. He says, this day you will be with me in paradise. God is more willing to answer than even our desire to ask for help. God comes. Look with me, Luke 44 and 45. And it was about the sixth hour and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. When he said yes to God, he immediately entered into a three hour crisis of darkness that you could feel. But in 2 Timothy 2, 10 through 13, Paul says this, Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, somebody say with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abided faithful, we cannot, he cannot deny himself. With Christ means choosing Jesus. Now, I go to church and people think choosing Jesus is just for sinners. Let, let me say that again. I go to church and when you say choose Jesus... People think I'm just talking to sinners. And God specifically told me, he said, when you get here, William, could you please give an invitation to the church you pastor? He said, give it first to the elders and then the ministers and then worship leaders and then to the musicians and then the mothers of the church and the fathers of the church. He said, tell them, Jesus said, I'm looking for all of y'all because I ain't seen some of y'all in a while, even though you've been born again. When is the last time you had an encounter with Jesus that made you run, made you happy, made you leap? When is the last time you had an encounter with God that reinvigorated you that it was so good you couldn't complain? All you had was a good word on your mouth. And if you can't say amen, Jesus is talking to you and me. Come on back and get with me because you ain't been with me. I don't live in complaint. I live in prayer. I don't live in excommunication. I live in bringing people into paradise. Y'all going through something right now. Well, don't wait till the battle is over. Shout right now. I, it's 11.25. Do I got time for a two-minute praise break? I'm about to teach y'all something because I'm sanctified. When the preacher, see y'all trying to get me to pump you up, I ain't going to pump nobody up. But for about one minute, whoever want to go up, you're going to jump on your feet and praise God like you know it's well with your soul. Right there, that, that dancing music. I need 
need that dance in there. Pick them up, put them down. Stuff. Down, down, down. They got 40 seconds. Gave you your minute. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Y'all, don't look at them. Y'all work with me. Work with Bishop. Don't worry about them. Work with me. They time up. They done. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. I'm teaching. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. We done. Sit down. Marquis. Sit down. We done. Going back to your post. Uh uh. Going back. Going back to your post. Now, wait, wait. What I gave you, what I gave you was a rehearsal. You don't miss it till it get cut off, do you? Now we're going to see in a minute, about five minutes, who really want it. You cut off. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. But I, don't you start. Don't you start. See, because we ain't giving nothing for free today. If you want your place, it's going to be a fight. You're going to have to put the devil out your mind. And after you get out your mind, you have to put them up under your feet. And if you ain't got no good feet, put them up under the shoulder raise. Put them up the hand. Wait. Now, Carol, you're getting started too early. Let me. Bree, I only got one last point. Where? Where? This day. You will be with me. Somebody say, where? Jesus said, in paradise. Literally, literally, the word means a park or garden. As a boy, I don't know how my father found time. It's still in my memory to this day. One of the favorite things to do is when he would take us to Genesee Valley Park. When you live in the hood and you ain't got nothing, a park is heaven. There were slides there. There were seesaws there. There was grass there. There was laughter there. There was communion there. There was an Olympic sized swimming pool there. There were diving boards there. And daddy would work all week and said, Listen, if you're good this week, I'm going to take you to the park. I want you to understand that this word in the Greek 
is a park. It is a garden. Will you walk with me? I remember that God made a perfect world. And when he made that world, he wanted somewhere for his king and priest to live. He made them a garden. It was called the Garden of Eden. He walked with them in the garden and he walks with me. And he walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. And the joy we share. As we tarry there, no other has ever known behold I make all things new here's the miracle God ain't about to do something you don't know I feel like preaching but I got to quit what God about to do I'm done now children he's about to go down in the enemy's camp and take back what the devil stole and restore back to you lost the revelation and got cute when y'all came out y'all was praising for broke like what nothing gonna stop you and in five minutes you went right back into being tired let me try it again take take back your place take back your anointing Take back your power. Take back your praise. Take back your mind. Where the enemy has been plaguing you with depression. Been pl I'm trying to quit, but they wouldn't help me. Had they praised the Lord, I wouldn't have came back. You've been bound with depression. You've got a spirit of fainting and a spirit of giving up. But somebody say the devil is a liar. There's sickness in your body. There's pain in your heart. But the devil is a liar. I am a king. I am a priest. I've got power.
got a choice. We've got a choice. We've got a choice. We've got a choice. We've got a choice. Today is a choosing day to stand up again. Life has pressed you down. Circumstances have pressed you down. But there's a choice to stand in Jesus' name. I don't know if you got any voice left. But years ago, you would take us home with no weapons formed against me shall prosper. No, no, say it won't work. Say no weapon formed against me shall prosper. No, no, it, it won't work. Say no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Oh, oh it won't work. Say no weapon formed against me. Shall prosper, no, no, it won't work. I know God will do what He said He would do. He will stand by His word. He will come through. Say. witness in the building. He will come through. I know God will do what he said he would do. He will stand by his word. He will come through. No Shall I 
Don't be afraid of the arrows or the snares and by the enemy. Mm -hmm. They won't work, oh no. You're gonna live and not die. You're gonna live and not die. You're gonna live, 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 gonna live, it won't work, it won't work, it won't work, it won't work. It won't work, it won't work, it won't work. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. No, no, said it won't work. Say no weapon formed against me. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, uh, dominion, and power both now and forever. Somebody shout out, it won't work, it won't work. It won't work, it won't work. Yes, I'm a watch out. Yeah. 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 Yeah.